नमस्कार टुडे आर टॉपिक इज स्टेट टूरिज्म डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन लेट इज बिगिन विद द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टेट टूरिज्म डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन एंड इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंस अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फंक्शन एंड द फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ स्टेट टूरिज्म डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन डिफाइनिंग महाराष्ट्र टूरिज्म डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन एंड इट्स फंक्शन and state tourism policies proposed by Maharashtra Tourism government to promote tourism Tourism planning in India was started after independence the conscious and organized efforts to promote tourism in India were made in 1945 when a committee was set up by the government under the leadership of Sir John Sargent then educational adviser to the government of India thereafter systematic tourism development took place in India The tourism planning approach has been evolved in second and third five-year plans. The sixth five-year plan emphasizes tourism as an instrument for economic development, integration and maintains social harmony. After 1980s, tourism activity gained momentum as employment generator, source income, foreign exchange earnings and as a leisure industry. The government has taken several significant measures to promote tourism industry. Beginning of ITDC, Indian Tourism Development Corporation. In 1966, the government decided to merge three public sectors into a tourism body to make a one complete corporation with the objective of securing coordination in tourism planning and in the policy. Efficiency and economic working of these three corporation is the hotel corporations of india limited india tourism corporation limited india tourism transport undertaking the ministry of tourism is the nodal agency of the formulation of national policies and programs and the coordination of activities of various central government agencies state governments union territories and the private sector for the development and promotion of tourism in the country The ministry is headed by the Union Minister of State of Tourism which is an independent charge. The Ministry of Tourism plans national arrangement for the advancement and enhancement of the travel industry. Simultaneously, the ministry councils and teams up with the different partners in the division including different ministries and agencies, state governments, association regions and private segment delegates. The Ministry of Tourism undertakes purposeful endeavors to advance the specialty in the travel industry in terms of covering of the national tourism development of the states medicinal facilities infrastructure facilities transportation facilities accommodation and the overall travel industry The Ministry of Tourism also keeps up the incredible India crusade concentrated on advancing the travel industry in India Similarly each state has its own uniqueness in terms and aspects it can be culture food dances festivals many more which differentiates them among the other states now to keep a check on the different states and the promote the tourism in the different state we have the state tourism development corporation Every state of India has a tourism development board which promotes information infrastructure to the tourist visiting the place. STDC that is State Tourism Development Corporation works as a major agency to develop the infrastructure of the region. STDC frame the necessary policies to develop and promote the tourism of the region and State Tourism Department works to improve the domestic and international tourist arrivals. Now let us understand what are the various functions being taken by the State Tourism Development Corporation. The State Tourism Development Corporation from now would be referred as STDC helps to develop the tourism within the state and helps concentric planning of the state. STDC tries to plan and create the tourism products which suits the all the stakeholders of the industry to provide transport accommodation entertainment shopping and conventional services to produce distribute tourist publicity material to render consultancy or managerial services in indian states abroad and various tourist leaders now let us understand the tourism in the state of maharashtra Maharashtra was formed by merging the western and southern western parts of the bombay state 
Berar and Vidharbha and the northwestern parts of the Hyderabad state and splitting Saurashtra in present day Gujarat by the state's reorganization act it has over 112 million inhabitants in capital mumbai and has a population around 18 million making it the most populous urban area in the world nagpur hosts the winter session of the state legislature Pune is known as the Oxford of the East due to the presence of several well-known educational institution. Nashik is well known as the wine capital of India and it has the largest numbers of wineries and vineyards in the country. Maharashtra, the most industrialized state in the country, is located in the western regions of India with gross state domestic product of Indian rupees 24.97 lakh crores. Maharashtra is the largest economy in India and accounts for 15.01% of the country's GDP in 2017 and 18. The economy of Maharashtra is mainly driven by manufacturing, finance, international trade, mass media, technology, petroleum, fashion, apparel, gems and jewelry, IT and ITIs and tourism. The city of Mumbai houses the headquarters and most of the major corporate and financial institutions of the country. India's main stock exchange BSC and NSC and main commodity exchange are located in the city along with the capital market. Maharashtra has well established industrial and financial ecosystem and became a leading industrial and financial center of the country under the pragmatic leadership. Maharashtra has always attracted major industrial investments from the domestic as well as the renowned foreign investors. According to the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion (DIPP), Government of India cumulative FDI inflows in Maharashtra during April 2000 to December 2017 stood to be US dollars 113.82 billion, accounting to one third of the total FDI inflow in the country. Maharashtra is made up of 35 districts which are grouped into 6 division. The breakup of these 6 division are as follows: Aurangabad division, Konkan division, Nashik division, Nagpur division and Pune division. Now let us understand the tourism potential in Maharashtra. Already being located at the seaside maharashtra with a geographical area of 3,7713 square kilometer and is the third largest state in india in terms of area with a coastal line spreading more than 720 kilometers and it is second highly populated state in the country it occupies a broad portion of the deccan plateau The state has a large untapped tourism potential with attractive tourist destination which consists of beaches, forts, hill stations, heritage and centuries. The famous attractions include Mahabaleshwar, Mathiran, Ajanta, Ellora, Elephanta, Murujinjira among others. Let's talk about the cultural heritage of the Maharashtra. Maharashtra has very rich cultural heritage. Out of 12 Jyotirlings, 5 are in Maharashtra. The ashes of the 10th Sikh Guru Gobind Singh are buried in Nandeda in Maharashtra. The Ganpati festival is most popular festival for all the communities. Shrines of Sufi sons are spread throughout in Maharashtra. Mumbai is the biggest center of Indian cinema known across the world. Over 70% of the India's rock cave art to be found in the state. Of all these, Ajanta and Ellora in the vicinity of Aurangabad are world famous heritage site and illustrate the degree of skill that Indian craftsmen has achieved several hundred years ago. Ajanta dates back between 2nd to 1st century BCE while Ellora was excavated around 600 years later. All these have been carved out of solid rock with little more than a hammer and a chisel are an important repository of the essence of Buddhism. Meanwhile, the Elephanta caves are a network of sculpted caves located on the Elephanta Island or Gharapuri in Mumbai harbor, 10 kilometers to the east of Mumbai and a tribute to the legend of Lord Shiva. There are a number of historical sites and monuments in Maharashtra as well like Bhaja Caves, Konadana, Vedra, Karle, Kanheri, Elephanta, 
अजंता रामतेक ब्रिक टेम्पल सिंहगढ़ फोर्ट आइलैंड फोर्ट्स लाइक बानेकेत गोपाल जियो जयगढ़ दियेगढ़ अरनाला जंजीरा एंड सिंधुदुर्ग दौलताबाद फोर्ट एंड अ नंबर ऑफ टोम्स इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द नेचुरल बाउंटी एंड द नेचुरल हेरिटेज महाराष्ट्र हैज अ ब्यूटिफुल लैंडस्केप विथ लॉन्ग कोस्ट लाइन एंड हिल रीजन्स द बीच इज अराउंड द मुंबई आर बिग अट्रैक्शन देर आर लॉट्स ऑफ हिल रिजॉर्ट्स फॉर टूरिस्ट इंपॉर्टेंस लाइक पन्हला महाबलेश्वर पंचगनी माथेरन लुनावला एंड खंडाला If you talk about the arts and craft it has long history of arts and craft and some are still surviving till date among the living crafts a number of things can be cited like the tribal paintings and embroidery by various tribes the cane and bamboo articles metalware and birdi work pathani silk sarees leather objects especially kolhapuri chappals and traditional marathi jewelry now let us begin with the Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation it's a company set up by Maharashtra government in 1975 with an authorized share capital of rupees 25 crores the objective of this government body is to double tourist traffic into the state in the next 5 years apart from acting as the nodal agency of the state for promotion and development of tourism maharashtra tourism development corporation also projects and enhances its historical physical and cultural heritage a state tourism board mtdc has been playing a pivotal role in projecting the multifaceted culture and heritage of maharashtra among visitors from all over the country and the world if we talk about the tourism in maharashtra The city of Mumbai is already the capital of India. There are 80% of cave temples which are situated in India. It has coastline dotted with beautiful beaches and national parks. More than 300 forts and rugged hill ranges, cool hill station and pilgrimage center of every religion. The Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation has led to tremendous infrastructure development. Well developed infrastructure is the first priority of any tourism state. The state is well connected to major industrial and consumption centers through road, rail, air and port connectivity. With power generation capacity of over 43000 megawatt, Maharashtra ensures 24 into 7 power supply to its industry. Through Maharashtra Industrial Development Corporation the state also ensures land availability to the investors. If you talk about the road network, national highways of around 22000 km are passing through the state. Futuristic expressway such as Maharashtra Samriddhi Mahamarg, a super communication expressway and an industrial corridor connecting Nagpur and Mumbai. six lane controlled access expressway connecting the cities of varodara gujarat and mumbai maharashtra are already under construction rail network two major railway zones are enhancing state's connectivity to the domestic market maharashtra has the longest metro rail network around of 233 kilometers under construction in the country with ongoing metro projects such as mumbai metro nagpur metro and pune metro If we talk about the airport connectivity and seaport connectivity Maharashtra has 7 domestic airports and 4 international airports and further the state government is developing 10 new airports of which Shirdi Nasik Nanded Kolhapur and Jalgaon airports are currently functional and Ratnagiri Gondia Sindhudurg and Amravati airports are yet to come up The state is well connected to the world via sea through two major ports and 53 minor ports. Now let us understand the tourism policy of Maharashtra. To understand the State Tourism Development Corporation and specifically the Maharashtra Tourism State Corporation, we need to understand what are the various tourism policies adopted by the State Tourism Development Corporation to promote the tourism in the state. If we talk about the Maharashtra's tourism policies its vision is to develop Maharashtra as a popular and sustainable tourist destination in the state that will offer vast experiences on global regional and local best practices and standards to meet upon 
if we talk about the mission of the development corporation is to promote the state as numero uno tourist destination to development of the tourism infrastructure across the state and facilitate the investment in the tourism sector the various objectives of the tourism policies are accelerate projects through private sector investment ppp mode in tourism sector public private partnership investment outreach to global investor community in tourism development of tourism infrastructure in the state develop innovative practices for marketing and promotions develop tourist destinations and avenues and adapt a sustainable approach to tourism development coverage of incentives under the maharashtra tourism policy 2016 includes tourism projects in the private sector state public sectors or joint sectors cooperative sector projects are as the part of central public sector will not be considered the proposed tourist facility shall be open to all and shall not be confined to the exclusively use of one particular individual or members of any group or club or have any such other restrictions if we talk about the targets set by the maharashtra tourism development corporation the targets are to establish maharashtra as the leading tourist destination in the world by 2025 to attract the investment to the tune of indian rupees of 30000 crores to create 1 million additional jobs in tourism sector double the number of tourism projects in 5 years and triple in 10 years double the tourist recipients in 5 years triple in 10 years and 1 million skilled and semi skilled resources in the tourism sector if we talk about the eligible units that are covered as the part of the policy are as follows hotels heritage hotels resorts health farms health and wellness spas in units registered under the bed and breakfast scheme of mtdc or dot motels and wayside amenities apartment hotels and service apartments water sports and amusement parks arts and craft villages golf courses camping caravaning tent facilities and aerial rope ways exhibition come convention centers development of hill station as the tourism units adventure tourism projects house boats eco tourism projects museums aquariums and shacks it also includes medical tourism units it projects provided by the classification committee of the tourism department by the state government or government of india the department of tourism government of maharashtra also started up with the tourism investor facilitation cell the tourism investor facilitation cell is the department of tourism government of maharashtra which will help the tourism investor and will act as a converging body to monitor the sector progress within the state the major functions will include tourism investment promotion investor facilitation in the state the summary of major features includes conduct project monitoring review of the existing projects within the state and attract the fresh investment in the tourism sector and develop the brand equity of maharashtra as a top global tourist destination also it act as the one stop connect for providing relevant information to the investors regarding information on the business approvals required for starting a business in the state it also helps in the scout services through hand holding support and management of web based portals and coordination through government agencies ensuring the business approvals are provided to the investors as per the citizen charter the data collection market research and analysis and publish periodical reports on the development of the tourism in the state the another important step taken by the state tourism development corporation of maharashtra is single window clearance of the hospitality industry single window clearance of the hospitality industry and the live events in the maharashtra are the department of tourism in which the process of creating a single window mechanism for the hospitality industry and restaurant backed by an empowered committee the core objectives of the framework are 
to enable an online one-stop shop for providing hassle-free licensing approval to the hospitality industry, to reduce delays and improve efficiency in processing various application, and to remove duplication of information and read efficiencies in the process to provide automated workflow in accordance to the citizen charter of the respective department. The expected outcomes of the industry from this mechanism, faster clearance and release, single source of information on licenses, processes, documents and requirements, increased transparency through application tracking and status check, enable online services for submission of all application and records and single interface, cutting costs through minimizing delays. A similar single window clearance system be developed for the live events in Maharashtra by the Department of Tourism. Now, if we talk about the public-private partnership, the Maharashtra Government Tourism Department is planning to develop the advisory cell. There are few advisory cells which are already working in the state of Maharashtra to promote the tourism. The government has taken to seriously enhance the public-private partnership to the next level. The Department of Tourism invited the application for the public-private partnership which will provide advisory services to the private sector participation in the development projects carried out across the state of Maharashtra. Public-private projects will be the key conduct for the greater infrastructure investment in developing Maharashtra. The major functions include cooperation between the public and private sectors and aim to carry out long-term investment projects in the social and infrastructure sphere. It also attracts private sector participation for infrastructure development projects. Access the operational expertise of private companies is another advantage of PPPs for implementing infrastructure projects efficiently. Identify suitable private partners for projects in the state. Advice on project marketing and deal structuring. Transaction advisory services for the public sector to engage private investors. To bid management services for investor. Identify optimal capital structures and financing strategies for PPP projects. Assist clients in packaging projects in order to raise capital through various debt or equity structures and instruments, create business plans, secure financing for infrastructure projects, valuation and business modeling, divestitures and carve-outs and feasibility studies. Now, with the beginning of 2019, the new tourism policy of Maharashtra government is already out. Let us now discuss the highlights of the new tourism policy adopted by the state of tourism government. The state government has decided to lease out 22 forts to private players and consortia. It has been said that the class 2 category with lesser historical significance will be done by leasing out properties of the Maharashtra Tourism Corporation for 30 and 60 years. The new tourism policy cleared by the state cabinet allows privatization of Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation resorts, open land and other protected monuments which are not under the control of the Archaeological Survey of India. Under the new policy, the state government will classify projects as ultra-mega, mega-projects, large-medium, small projects, while dividing the state into three tourism zones giving benefits accordingly. As per the policy, the tourism-related projects with a fixed capital investment of a minimum of Rs 500 crore or promising a direct employment generation of 750 anywhere in the state will be categorized as ultra-mega projects. Among various benefits, the policy allows tourism projects several fiscal incentives such as concessions in the stamp duty, electricity duty, entertainment tax, leisure tax, refund of VAT and so on akin to industrial projects. While announcing the policy in the State Legislative Assembly, the Chief Minister Devendra Fernandez said the tourism sector had the status of being in industry since 1999. However, it never enjoyed any of the benefits and incentives offered to the industry. The new policy will give these benefits. With the new tourism policy, the state government hopes to attract the investment worth Rs 30,000 crores and additional jobs in the tourism sector. 
the state also hopes to double revenue for tourism in coming five years. Besides financial benefits, the tourism policy also stresses on training, skill development in the industry, equipping guides and giving politeness lessons to the taxi drivers. Accordingly, it promises a grant of rupees 12,500 per person for skill development and tourism and a grant of rupees 5,000 per person to train as a guide. The government will also democrate special tourism zone and tourism districts from time to time and promote theme-based tourism, especially religious tourism, medical tourism, agro-tourism and nature tourism. The policy talks about a single window system for approvals, pre-approved venues for events, special incentives for women and handicapped entrepreneurs, and additional floor space index for the tourism projects. It also does away with the current mandate of getting licenses for tourism units renewed every year, relaxing the requirement to once in five years. Now, Maharashtra Tourism Development Corporation has a long way to go and they have done really well. With the coming tourism vision, policy and the efforts, they are showing their presence in the global market. The participation in the World Travel Mart in London, the introduction of the new festivals like Wari Festivals, Agro Festival 2019 and a number more, they are making a niche in the market. They are using social media marketing very well and the website of the Maharashtra Tourism Government is updated and user-friendly. By this, we have come to the end of the presentation and we have understood the role of State Tourism Development Corporation in the development of region. We understand that State Tourism Development Corporation plays a very crucial role in the development of infrastructure and in the state. It helps the state to do the concentric planning and the state tourism's various policies helps to develop and promote the tourism of the region. The state tourism also helps in the promotion and the publicity of the tourism product. State Tourism Department works to improve the domestic and international tourist arrivals by increasing the infrastructure, accommodation, transportation and other travel products and services. STDC helps to create a brand image of the state. We have also came to know that Maharashtra is a big state with its beautiful coastal lines, the forts, the palaces, UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is the centre of the Industrial Revolution. The new tourism policy of 2019 also given a green signal in the state to emerge the state as the major investor in the tourism. So by this, we can say that state tourism of Maharashtra and the other regions help to develop the tourism to the maximum level. The development of the infrastructure, the development of the railways, roadways, the development of ports and various accommodation facilities are the major part which state tourism takes place. And here we have understood it with the help of Maharashtra. Maharashtra is also on the verge of becoming and emerging as one of the most popular tourist destination in India with its new tourism policies which are open to the industry. Thank you very much. By this, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you got to understood the value and the importance of State Tourism Development Corporation and Maharashtra as a state tourism body.